Hey, what's up? Chicago and I here. Today we're going to go over some certifications, uh, topics based off of security mostly, uh, but we'll touch a little bit on some network stuff as well. So certifications are kind of the, the way that a lot of people, uh, big companies, are going to try to hire some cybersecurity professionals um, in lieu of if they don't have like a college diploma or a bachelor's degree, whatever. Certifications sometimes will hold up very well in an interview and you sometimes don't even need to have that bachelor's degree, although I recommend getting something like that, either in some sort of tech field or computer field, because it does increase your chances. But when it comes to actual interviews that these headhunters will do for cybersecurity companies, um, generally they'll look for specific certs that the industry considers to be popular or the best certifications out there. Now, I have experience in this. I taught certification classes for about eight to nine, actually about 10 years. And uh, I did it through two different companies. And the, the essential thing that I had done is there was a five day boot camp, they called it. And let's just say, I don't know, we'll go with um, Server 2012, or that, that was one of the ones. I was a Microsoft certified trainer. So essentially what would happen is these companies that want their network engineers to be certified in Server 2012 administration, they would then send them to these boot camps that are week long, and uh, they would basically crash course the whole Server 2012 course for the MCSA stuff, and then they would take a test on the fifth day there at the location. So typically it would be like a hotel conference room or something like that, and they would fly me out. The company would fly me out to these conference rooms, and then people from all over, wherever they want to be, like 20 different students, let's say, on a, on a general class, would fly in, and they would stay at that hotel, and that would be included with their price for the course itself. Now, I wasn't in the pricing uh, administration part of it, but it was in the grand. <laughs> it was it was a couple grand for this bad boy, uh, but essentially that covered your, your meals for the week, it covered your hotel, and it covered the course, and it also covered the certification exam at the end. And the companies that I had worked for, both were proctors of exams. They actually were test centers. So they would fly another guy out to this one location, and they, th he would basically set the test up, and uh, he would be a Prometric or Pearson View or whatever. You know, those are the two main ones. Th he would be the, basically the, the point man for that particular uh, test to administrate it. So essentially, I'd come in on day one uh, at the hotel. We'd get up a, you know, in, in the classroom, maybe 8 o'clock in the morning, and I would start going through the courseware for Microsoft Server 2012, let's say the 410 or something like that, right? That was the number of the exam. And throughout the week, we would do, I don't know, 12 hours <laughs> of instruction and lab, and, uh, and then they would go back to their hotel room, and I would have them studying. Well, we hope they would, but most of them just drinking and <laughs> doing whatever. But most of the time, you know, the, the studious ones, they would go back and they would study all night long. And then they would get back up in the morning, do it again, 12 hours. So that's why they called it a boot camp, because it was basically cramming a s semester's worth of college type of you know material in one week. So I had to speak real fast and and not really go deep in detail on a lot of stuff. I had to do very surface level. Um, so that's that's the idea behind uh, these boot camp styles to do certifications. Now, in my opinion, after doing this for so many years, I've noticed there's certain breeds of people that can do these things or not do them. Um, sometimes it's not any fault of their own because their company just basically says, well, we need this industry st uh, standard. We need the certification so that when we get audited, um, then, you know, some of these some of these different tech levels that we have these people at, they have to have some sort of training in it or whatever. So to fulfill their training requirement, they would budget a certain amount of money, and they would send people, they'd say, hey, uh, Smojo over here, Chuck Norris over there, Leroy Jenkins, you're going to this uh, network class for Server 2012. And some of these people would come to my classes, like, say, a basic network plus from CompTIA. They wouldn't even know what a router is. So, I mean, it was like... Uh, the sites themselves would say what the prerequisites were, but of course you have your sales teams for all these different uh, boot camp <laughs> tech college uh, classes and stuff and companies, and uh, they just look for the sale, right? So they would basically say, oh, yeah, you're good to go. You can turn on a computer player, and it was just ridiculous, man. I mean, the people we would get, it was, it was kind of sad a little bit because 
the ones that were really, really poor at this and don't, and don't know anything, or if they were back in the, you know, how about playing a nice game of chess war games type of day where they were doing the punch cards and all that jazz, and they they don't quite understand the new way of doing things in networking. And I've seen grown men just bl- just straight out crying, man. The waterworks just blow, just flowing when they don't pass the exam. And I don't really, I'm not, I'm not very good at, <laughs> at comforting people with that sort of thing. But I had to learn kind of how to do it, um, or at least just listen to them. And uh, but it was it was it was actually a, a, a sad deal because in order to keep their job, they had to get a certification. If they didn't get it, beep, out of there. And that kind of sucks, but uh, that's the way it was. And uh, the government was the same way with their DOD 8570 requirements. So certifications in general, what I'm getting at, it is a game. It is a very big money game, if it, as it were. And a lot of times it doesn't actually show competency. And that's the real issue that we come across in the certification game. Um, I, I've tried to do things a lot different than other uh, instructors, and I'm, I'm not putting any other instructors down, but it, there's some that would just read PowerPoints, and I, I can't, I hate PowerPoints. I hate reading off PowerPoints. I'm more of a hands-on, you know what I'm saying? Um, some of the classes, though, you, you had to do PowerPoints because it was completely dry, like CISSP or something, where there's not a lot of lab or demo. Um, but in general, the certification stuff was... Always, sometimes, well, sometimes it was a little bit of dry, but sometimes you could spice it up with some labs and things. And then, you know, that could build some competency. But then you have the group of people that will come take these certifications and they'll do these things they call brain dumps uh, that you find online. And uh, they would bring these, bra- they would print them off and bring them to class with them and show me them <laughs> and tell me that this is what they're going to use for the exam. Uh, and they were just there basically to fill a seat because their, their company paid for it. And I, and I browsed through a few of these uh, cheat sheets or uh, brain dumps, whatever they call them, and they were horrendous. I mean, the majority of them were like 60% wrong. Uh, the majority of them were all misspelled. You know, it's just garbage. And I was like, you know, hey, you're grown adults, but I'm telling you, man, this is garbage. Don't do it. And I still, tell, I still will say that to those that are going to plan on taking certifications uh, or any exams, don't use brain dumps uh, <laughs> because it's just not, it's not accurate the majority of the time and it's just not ethical really but uh, aside from that whenever we do the certifications for security side of things the places that i've been to and i've like i said i've gone through teaching this stuff but i've also gone through doing actual penetration testing for like the government i did some for a government agency where i did uh, web app pen testing and the current job i have which is a web app pen tester as well so that's kind of my specialty but in those cases there, I didn't need a bachelor's degree and any of that kind of stuff. I had to actually had to prove competency in the interviews. And those uh, that's where it gets a little bit different when it comes to the security industry. The network industry and some of the other industries may not be as hardcore on that. They may just say, hey, do you get an MCSA? Do you get an MCSE? Whatever. Uh, and again, I'm, just, I'm not speaking from uh, an authoritative source because I'm not a headhunter for these companies. But... I just know on my experience that when I ever I did any interviews for these security positions that I had got, I had to go, let's see, there's one job I had to go through four interviews. There was another job, the current one I'm at, I had to do five interviews. And each one of those interviews, I had to meet with different people within that company that wanted to test my competency. There was one guy I had to meet that wanted to actually test me on my Nmap knowledge. Um, for uh, And it's, it's kind of strange. Um, I basically just had to say whatever <laughs> I needed to say uh, when it comes to the end map. I was just blasting off all the different switches. I was basically in an instructor mode, and I basically blasted through a variety of different techniques and switches. And it was like the guy was like, "Okay, I'm good. That's good." So sometimes you can blow them away with your knowledge, or other times where this has happened to me before as well is sometimes knowing too much is a detriment. And it kind of sucks because you can't really do too much about that. Um, I'll give you an example of one. I won't name the company, but I went in there and I had 20, I have 21 certifications. So you would think on paper, all these certifications for, you know, Microsoft, CompTIA, yeah, uh, Certified Ethical Hacking, Security Plus, whatever. You would think, you know, hey, this is a, this is a lock, man. And I started m- blasting through two or three. I was in like, I was on like the third interview. 
And uh, one of the guys that was interviewing me that they brought in was the guy that I was actually taking there. I would be taking that guy's position. He would be moving up. So he was grilling me on all the different tools and stuff I had in my resume that I that I knew and the different uh, security concepts and penetration steps and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the, he focused a lot on the different tools that I knew uh, because I had to teach it for <laughs> certified ethical hacking. And he didn't know maybe 80 percent of them. And he was genuinely asking me about them because uh, he wanted to know about them to use for the next position he was getting. But then again, after all that stuff was done, I got to my third interview. They basically told me <laughs> in a sense that they don't think I would be able to learn their way of doing it because I have all this book knowledge. I would be set in my ways. Instead of giving me the opportunity to prove them wrong, they just basically told me I have too much knowledge I guess too much certifications for whatever I don't, I don't know what it was but it was a little strange because uh, you know I, I believe I was fully qualified for whatever they were asking but it is what it is but then on again on the, on the flip side the, the other job that I was at for another position the certifications came in huge I mean even the training background came in huge they said mainly we're pushing you to the fifth interview because of your training background we want to take advantage of your training plus your you know, certifications and all that kind of stuff. So when you actually are out there in the field trying to get a security job in this day and age, they are looking for certain certifications. And I want to kind of go over my thoughts on some of the certifications I'm seeing pop up on the 2020 uh, view here. So I'm going to switch over to my uh, browser here. And I've noticed this particular one here. I just, I'm just pulling some of these up from Google or whatever. It says here, the top 10 cybersecurity certifications in 2020 are, number one, SysP. So SysP is an interesting cert. This one here is uh, pretty pricey as well. The exam, I think, I believe it's still 250 questions, and there's about 20, I think there's about 20 of them that are beta, so they're not even scored. They're just thrown in there. So it even makes it a little bit more difficult. You have to actually get a better, you have to actually answer more to get a better score because of all these dumb beta questions. And, and certification co uh, companies will do this all the time. CompTIA does it. Microsoft does it. They all do it. Um, so SysP, in my opinion, is more managerial or administrative. So if you're, if you're not like a, uh, you know, hands-on type of guy and technical and, and right into the, you know, getting down and dirty on the actual offensive side of security, this, not, is not the secu is, this is not the cert for you. Now, the reason I say that is because I've taught <laughs> some of this stuff before. Uh, with the, they, they're now down to, I think, eight domains is what the new one is. And th everything in there is, you know, high-level stuff like, you know, what, what uh, frameworks are out there. Uh, the ISO standards, the different laws and regulations like the EU and, and all these other different things. But there's nothing like really technical in this course at all. And a and <laughs> funny thing is a funny little story here. But when I was doing an online class uh, teaching the concepts from SysP, <laughs> I was teaching and it was a uh, it was an eight hour session. And I remember that I actually dozed off <laughs> because I was so bored with this content. Now, I'm not, I'm not knocking SysP. It, it is an industry standard. It is an excellent certification. IC Squared is an excellent company. Just for me, it's really dry, and I don't dig it at all. I just don't, I don't like it. Um, but I was teaching it, and uh, <laughs> I actually felt nodded, nodded off. And I pretended, I told this, the class because... I, I caught myself about maybe, uh, it must have been at least eight, nine, maybe 10 seconds. <laughs> and I caught myself and I was like, oh yeah, my mouse froze, man. The screen froze. Sorry about that. And uh, I was sleeping. I was knocked right out. But anyways, aside from that, the SysP <laughs> in general is a great certification for the administrative side. And it does pay well. And a lot of companies are looking for this cert. Uh, a lot of times it is a requirement that you have to have it. So I do agree with this particular place in for the SSP uh, if you're into the administrative side of things. Uh, but great, great stuff, great certification. It is, uh, like I said, it is still um, multiple choice. And uh, the way these particular questions are asked on this exam is they're done uh, from the standpoint of what's the best answer. In other words, there's like, let's say there's four answers. And three of them are correct. 
they're going to say, well, what's the best answer? And to me, that's that's a bit uh, subjective. I mean, I don't know. What do you think is the best answer, Sispy? I think this one is, but, you know, it, it's all whatever. So that one's a little bit more difficult to attain. And they're pretty hardcore when you go do this testing. Now, um, there have been some guys <laughs> that I've been in the industry with that told me that they actually would follow them to the bathroom to make sure they're not, I don't know, cheating. Or I don't know how they would cheat in the bathroom for it. I think maybe maybe they go in there and they pull out a long <laughs> strip of answers or something on their on their tongue. I don't know. But even even to me, I'm like, what does that have to do with anything? Because they go with the best answer. So your little cheat sheet of answers probably ain't going to be correct, but it was weird. But great, sir. I agree with that one. Uh, let's go down to this one. Sism. So this one's very similar to... Uh, SysP, whereas it's a very managerial cert as well. And this one here, again, is going to be, as you can tell by the name, Certified Information Security Manager. This is also a very top-notch company, top-notch certification. It is well-known in the field, and uh, headhunters do look for it. Now, by the way, when I say headhunter, I'm not talking <laughs> literally somebody looking to chop your head off. The term they give it is uh, companies will hire a, uh, a person or a company to actually do the interviews and do the seeking out of these security professionals, and that's typically what they would call a headhunter. So they do look for this particular one. I've seen in a lot of different uh, resume requirements. So this one here, I don't have as much experience with because I actually have never taught this class, but uh, it is very popular, and you can see here the pay, pay scale range is pretty high. So pretty awesome stuff. All right, now this one, whew, certified ethical hacker. All right. So I've been an EC Council instructor for quite some time, probably about 12 years. And I've done CEH version 7, I've done version 8, version 9, and version, well, I haven't done version 10, uh, version 9. So I've done those three. And uh, I've taught all three of them throughout the years. This particular one here, the main thing I'll say about this is it is a requirement for a lot of companies. And especially if you do the government side of things, they do a lot of the uh, DOD 8570 requirements. And the DOD 8570 essentially, in, in layman's terms, is if you have different tech levels, let's say you have tech tier 1, tech tier 2, tech tier 3, each one of these different tiers will have different requirements for certifications in order for you to be able to perform that job. If you don't have the certification, you don't have a job. That's, that's it. It's cut and dry. Uh, and I know that because they, the company I work for had sent me to every military base throughout the United States, and I had to teach the CEH on, prem, on, on, the, on the premise there. And uh, these uh, military men and women would tell me that in the class that, hey, if I don't pass this, man, I'm, d I'm done. I, I, I can't do this job. I have to move to something else. So uh, I know that it was a requirement. I knew a lot of them didn't want to do it, <laughs> but it was, like I said, mandatory. So this particular one, as far as content goes, or as far as, let, let me say, how, is, how relative is it to the job you want to do? This one is more hands-on. This one is more for the person that is looking for the offensive side. As a matter of fact, in the course itself, in the books, there is uh, multiple times that they state in full, bold letters that the CEH is 100% offensive, no defensive. So when I taught the CEH, I kind of gave a few tips on defensive side, but essentially when you're teaching it, it's all offensive, all of it. The problem, though, that I come across with CEH is the content. The content is so archaic and it's so tool heavy, it just it drives me nuts. I was actually literally teaching <laughs> in the version 9 a tool that they had in their courseware from 1992 or something. Uh, and, and they were, you know, it was for um, hacking Qt FTP or something back in the day. It was ridiculous, man. Uh, and they had one, like, if you if you broke into it, it was a, there was, oh, what was the name of it? JPS Virus Maker was one. And then there was Dark Comet. And they had, like, you know, command and control in the window and, and, and you click this button and it flips the guy's screen. I mean, like so 1990s hacking, it's it's unbelievable. But they were literally teaching on this stupid tool to this day. It's, it's ridiculous. And most, I would say 80% of the tools they talk about in there are 
are archaic or don't even work anymore <laughs> or they're picked up by every single signature file known to man. Uh, so content-wise, I didn't like it at all. Of course, I had uh, fun teaching it because I could go off and do some labs and stuff, and I was completely hands-on with this one. Now, I did have some people that were in the same company I worked for who also taught this class, and I sat I sat a couple of them or, or viewed their videos or talked to students, and it was kind of sad because they would just basically read through all the PowerPoints the entire week. And this is the type of class where you don't do that. You literally have to do hands-on. Uh, as an example, they would read the, uh, some of the instructors would read the whole entire switches of Nmap and then move on to something else. For me, I would say, okay, we're going to learn Nmap. Bring up your lab environment, bring up a, ter a terminal, and let's blast it. And I would then have them run Nmap against a vulnerable machine, and then we would Wireshark capture it, and we would view what the packets would have. They would, uh, you know, the SYN and the, the SYNAC and the ACK. Because on the exam, they would ask specific things like, if I'm coming from a Linux machine to a Windows machine and I want to do this particular Nmap, what happens or what does it show for, you know, is it RST if it's uh, port is open, things like that. And so you actually literally had to know you know, very technical things about it and about the tools. But that's the issue I have with CEH is it's extremely tool heavy. And in the industry of security, if you talk to a majority of people that are out there doing it for a living, the majority of them like to script their own things. They like to automate certain things, but they're not, there's a lot of them I've talked to are not extremely tool heavy, right? They don't, they don't play with 1500 different tools they essentially find something they like and they work with it for example me with web app hacking i find burp suite uh, pro does pretty much everything i need and that's all i use really i mean other than just basic you know developer tools from chrome or something like that um, but this one here they test you on the tools what they look like the interface it's ridiculous so for the ethical hacker i will say that on every resume i've submitted and every job i've tried to get this is one they always talked about. They always talked about, every one of them. So this one is found in the industry uh, as being probably one of the most popular that they're looking for from a technical standpoint. This is not a CISSP type of certification. If you're more the technical hands-on guy, this is the one you should get. Now, I would prerequisite and say you should probably take the CompTIA Security Plus first. The reason I say that is because the Security Plus goes over concepts like IDSs and, and port scan and things like that, whereas the CEH actually does those things, right? They actually go in there and do port scans. So I would take the Security Plus first, then this one, and those two right there should get you in interviews. Now, once you get to the interview, it's on you. You either know the crap or you don't. <laughs> and I found that I found that to be the case in a lot of people that I've talked to, a lot of friends of mine who thought, hey, I got the CEH player, let's go blast it. And they get in there, they don't know anything about microservices development. They don't know anything about APIs. They don't know about uh, how to do something on the fly without a cheat sheet right there in the terminal. They don't know how to navigate a terminal, things like that. Um, so, yeah, third place, I guess we can say, yeah, because the military does have this one as being a major requirement. This one is on pretty much everybody's list. But content-wise, I can say emphatically that when I went into my first pen testing job, this course here, this certification, none of it, I didn't use any of it in my pen testing job. <laughs> so I had to learn a lot on the fly. I knew the concepts, um, but most of it I, I already knew from just messing around my own and, and, and all the other certifications I've taught. But I've noticed when I got that job, I was like, I'm not using a thing from this. <laughs> Maybe I'm using a few Nmap scans or something. But in reality, this does not prepare you, in my opinion, for a pen test job. Uh, by pen test, I mean penetration testing, where you're an offensive security guy and you're going in there and attacking a system with permission. And you're basically testing the security controls that they have in place. This is a good cert to have to get an interview. And I would say that's about it. Let's see. And, I'll, and, and I'm sick and tired of this stuff. With this, <laughs> this stupid. Always trying to pull on the uh, the script kitties there and uh, 
for the sales and marketing with the little anonymous hoodie garbage. I can't stand that stuff. All right, Security Plus. Yes, this one definitely is a is a must. Um, I've seen many companies require this as an as mandatory. So this one is not really that difficult to get if you understand security in general, because CompTIA has a way of uh, being very surface level. <laughs> they don't get very deep on a lot of these things. But the only problem with CompTIA is, because I've been a trainer for so long, is that they, they do a lot of gotcha questions. And you have to actually understand what the question is first and then answer the question, because you have to understand what the heck are they even asking because they word it so stupid. I mean, just ridiculous. Um, if they would just ask a straight up question, it'd be great, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, so, well, you know, and they're very port heavy. If you don't know your port numbers, oh man, you better brush up before you take this test. Because I would say a good 40% of that exam has to do with port numbers. And uh, we're talking not just your common ones like 80 and 443, we're talking about a little bit more the deeper ones like some UDP ports for. Uh, radius and things like that. So this is a great one to have. I would also couple this with Network Plus because you have to know your network and to understand how the environment works that you're going to be in and also to set up your own pen test lab to kind of practice. You kind of have to know networking anyways. So I would actually probably in this order, I would probably do Network Plus, then I would do Security Plus because there's a lot of concepts that bleed over from Net Plus into Security Plus. And then there, uh, then I would move to CEH. Now, on a side, I didn't think about this before I started the video. If you are planning to do either one of those, uh, Net Plus or Security Plus, I'm going to give a plug to somebody. This is the guy that I would say is the absolute best in order to learn how to pass this exam. And I'll put these links in the uh, description. But if you want to learn uh, A Plus, Net Plus, Security Plus, it looks like he's doing Cisco now. In my opinion, this is the best guy, and it's free, too. It's all free. All these videos are free, and he does, like, Facebook study groups, which is pretty cool, and you can jump into the study group, and I think he does them, like, weekly, and you can talk directly to him and ask him questions about whatever. He explains stuff. I will tell you that when I first took the CompTIA A+, plus, Net+, plus, Sec+, plus suite for exams, I, I took this guy's video series because I, I don't like reading books. <laughs> I, don't, I fall asleep when I read books, so... I have a hard time with that. I, I engage with hands-on or video. I watch this guy's stuff. I'm telling you, the exams were pretty much dead on to what he was saying. Not in a cheating kind of way, but all the concepts that they covered and all the different things and the terminology that CompTIA uses, this guy has it locked in. This guy is the best, in my opinion. So if you are going to do that, I would highly recommend going with him. All right, OSCP, here we go. Now, in my opinion from a penetration test inside, not managerial, this is the number one cert, bar none. These guys have it together. What I like about them, they're called offensive security. They actually created first Backtrack Linux, which is used by a lot of pen testers. And then they created Kali Linux, which is probably outside of Parrot OS, the number one uh, penetration test in Linux distribution. So this particular one, I bought this course uh, for, the, for the material and stuff for it, and I also bought some of the lab environments they had for the OSCP. And I have to say this is probably some of the best instruction I've had material-wise and practical hands-on. Now, the, what, I, what I think is so good about this exam and this test here um, is that it's entirely uh, – hands-on for the exam. I hate these multiple choice exams where you just kind of luck of the draw. Even if you don't know the answer, you know, when in doubt, Charlie out. <laughs> that means pick C every time. <laughs> then you're going to have a high percentage that is correct. I don't like those. Again, it doesn't really give competency, as, as it were. Like, like with Windows. If Windows did this for their certifications, because Microsoft sucks for certification exams, and, I, and I'll... I won't go off on that, but the horrible. If they were to go this route like these guys do, it would be fantastic. It would be the absolute best certifications out there. For instance, if you were going to take an exam from Microsoft and they said, well, if you wanted to go ahead and set up a DNS and do this, 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 and you know, here's your four choices of what you can do, how about uh, what if they did this? What if they said, here's your exam, 
here's server 2012, literally right there in front of you. And on the left-hand side, here is a list of tasks you need to do. If you can do these tasks, you pass, right? That, to me, tests competency. Screw this stupid multiple-choice garbage. Just give them the product and say, demonstrate you know this stuff, and we're good. OSCP does that. It's a 24-hour exam. You guys are like, whoa, whoa, 24-hour exam? Yeah, they give you five machines, uh, virtual machines, that you log in with OpenVPN, and you have 24 hours to break into as many as you can and get particular flags to demonstrate it. And you also have to do um, uh, a reporting as well. So while you're doing the reporting, that's another very important part of the pen test stuff. Um, you have you have your 24 hours for your exam, and then after that, the next day, you have another 24 hours to finish that report. Now, I don't know if that's still how they do it. I know that's how they did it a few years ago. Um, but you have another 24 hours to get that uh, report done and submitted. And then they'll say, okay, you're good to go. But you don't know on the, on the fly. You, they just give you basically, they say, all right, you have 25 points if you can do this. Uh, so, for example, there was one where they wanted you to um, – find an application, I think it was SL Mail or something, I can't remember what it was, but it was some, it was some vulnerable application, but essentially you had to reverse engineer it, and uh, you had to use ID, uh, IDA Pro or something like that, but you had to, you had to find the, uh, you know, mess with the EIP pointers and all that kind of stuff. So, very hands-on, because essentially, if you just don't, if you don't break into the machines, you don't, you don't pass, and you have 24 hours to do it. They say, here's five machines, blast them, do it, and if you get, um, admin access on one like if you did if you broke into one but didn't get privilege escalation you wouldn't get as many points if you did you know broke in and you got privilege escalation up to root or whatever they would have a point system at the end and you i can't remember how many you had to reach it was like 50 or i can't remember what it was to pass but there was a certain threshold you had to meet for it um so when you buy this particular course it is i think about i think a thousand dollars will give you the exam voucher it will give you the course uh, pdf and it will give you uh, lab environments for a certain amount of time. I think I had bought 30-day uh, access, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so they, I think they have like 30-day, 30-day, 60, uh, 60 60-day, and things like that. So you can buy whatever the access is. You can get the course, you get the certification, uh, exam, voucher, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this, in my opinion, should be sought after more by all security industry professionals. Unfortunately, a lot of them don't even know what this is. Uh, because they're so ingrained and stuck in this CompTIA world and this EC Council world where, oh, we have to require or make sure they got CEH and Security Plus. Screw that. Just ask for this. If they got this bad boy, they know stuff, period. That's just the way it is. So in my opinion, <laughs> most companies should just go, bing, we need this. And some do. Some actually go for this. And if you talk to a lot of security professionals out there, uh, they'll usually – crap on CEH quite a bit. Security Plus, though, they're, they're okay with because it's a general cert that kind of gets you into the industry. But uh, OSCP is always, bing, right up the top of the line. And they have, as you can see here, they got some other ones. they got a web app one right here, and then they got some more advanced exploitation stuff and wireless and all kinds of cool stuff. So highly recommended offensive security. This one here, in my opinion, is the best cert. And it's also the best way to do certifications, in my opinion. Uh, so that should actually be number one <laughs> in my point. So I don't agree with that one. Um, the, I don't know what this one is here, CCSP. I haven't done this one, but I will say that everybody is moving to the cloud. So get in like an AWS security cert or something. AW, I would say AWS is probably the most uh, prominent right now. Uh, Google, it's usually AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. Google Cloud's still kind of in its early stages, I think. AWS is a lot more mature, and Azure is Microsoft. That's all I'm going to say about that. So <laughs> uh, so the, the cloud security stuff, I'm telling you, is high dollar. You're going to be balling for days on the money you'll make from this stuff. So I'm telling you, it's not as saturated either, and that's what's great about it. Is this, this, this particular field is not as saturated as some, so <laughs> definitely go with, the, with cloud security. Uh, security. I'm not familiar with this one in particular. It's from IC Square, so it's got to be really top notch, I believe. I don't know if they focus or if they're uh, platform independent or or what the deal is. Um, I don't think this is probably an accurate. Well, okay, average salary. Yeah, I can say that. 
I, I would think that you would be up in the six figure range currently in this day and age with this sort of stuff. If you really knew what you were doing, I would say that. I don't even know what this one is. I, I mean, I know what the ISO 27001 is, which is the uh, you know ISO standard for security stuff, but I've never heard of this lead implementer. It's kind of weird. Sounds like uh, <laughs> the most popular in Europe. Okay. Huh. I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with that GDPR requirement in Europe, but this one, I have no idea about, so I'm going to move on. Uh, EC Council, uh, yeah. it says similar to OSCP. Now, I haven't taken this one, but they had another one that was probably where this was born from, which was called the LPT, License Pen Test um, uh, Certification. And that one was coupled with another one called ECSA, but not very popular amongst a lot of different places. Uh, but this one says it's similar to OSCP and OSCE, so I may have to look into this and see what they've done. But I just don't put a lot of stock in, in EC Council's material. Um, I don't find it as relevant to what we do in real life, so I don't know. But uh, this would be something maybe to look at, APT. Uh, definitely OSCE, this is the more difficult one. So you have the OSCP, which is the professional, then you have this one, which is the expert. So this would be a little bit more difficult. And as you can see, this one is 48 hours. Oh, my Lord. That is insane. So, yeah, that one there, you, be you better be all monstered up and, I don't know, high on crack or something. But you got to be ready to rock and roll on that one, apparently. Um, but that one there is definitely, you know stuff if you can pass that bad boy. Highly recommend Offensive Security, any of their certifications. I will, I'm 100% behind. The GSEC. Now, the only issue with this one. Now, this one is highly sought after um, by a lot of companies. The only issue with this one is the price is insane for these courses from SANS. I mean, it's like on another level of stupidity. I just don't even know why or how they justify the amount of money that they charge for this sort of thing. <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, hey, they're going to make their money, I guess. But if this is the way you want to go, this one is well-known and it is well-received in the community. Um, I wouldn't say it's as good, obviously, as the OSCP or anything. But it definitely is a major step up from the CEH for sure. So, yes, this one I know is highly sought after. I've heard many uh, headhunters mention, hey, do you got the GSEC? Do you got this one? I don't have this one. This is because I don't have the money for it, and I haven't worked for a company where they decided to pay for it. But if your company pays for it, take it. It's awesome. Honorable mentions. Let's see here. CCISO, another EC Council one. I tell you, man, these – oh, look at this. ECES, another EC Council one. Oh, my Lord. Let's see. Okay, now this one is specialty. Uh, forensic investigator. So this is kind of like that CSI cyber show they had where this one's more for the data carving. And, uh, you know, in, in the, when a breach happens, you're the one that's going to be pulling the data from the hard drives and freezing the memory sticks and all that kind of jazz. So that's where this, it's a more specialized field. It's not really full on regular security stuff. But that, that is a, that one's a good one. I, I've, I've, I've had a, a friend of mine who taught this. I actually studied for this for teaching it, uh, but my company moved me on to something different, so I never finished it. But it, it had good material, uh, so I'll give them their due. Man, what is this, an EC Council uh, shill site or what? Man, holy cow, everything is EC Council. Um, so anyways, yeah. And you'll notice when you go to other ones, and I won't spend a lot of time on this, the same jabronis are listed here, right? CEH, CISM, uh, Security Plus, CISP, CISM, right? So essentially, in the field of security, here's my overview of it. If you want to be more managerial and you want a job that is more managerial in the security field, CISP, in my opinion, is probably the best one to get. It is the one most highly sought after. If you're looking more for the technical side of things, penetration testing, even though this doesn't necessarily teach you to be a pen tester, this is the certification most companies are looking for, CEH. And that's from my experience. Now, again, things can change over the years, and I haven't taught for a few years. But I, I believe, as from looking at this particular site, that it's still pretty sought after. These other ones are good as well. And Security Plus, I think, is a, is a bedrock. That's kind of a must, I think. Uh, it goes without saying. That's kind of, I, th I think that's a mandatory one. At least have that. And I highly recommend some sort of network and certification like Net Plus. Um, then you pop up this one. You can see it's probably the same thing. Let's see. SysPs. Now, this one's kind of cool because it tells you kind of the salaries and what the cost of the exam is. That's where it gets crazy is the amount here. That's where I say it's a game. Man, 
They pay, they charge so much money, and the way that they do their exams and the way they word their questions, they are gearing it for retest, man. They want retest money all day long. So, yeah, this 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 game of this price and stuff is insane. I think actually CEH went up in price too. And don't forget, a lot of these you have to pay yearly after you get the certification to maintain the cert, like for CEH. They moved it up to, I believe, 80 bucks a year you had to pay additionally to maintain the cert. Um, and then you also have to get these what they call CPE credits. Uh, by you know Those are fairly easy to get. Like I said, it's a lot of times you can read a book, take a course, go to Udemy and watch something, whatever. And you can uh, submit those for CPE credits. Uh, but you have to usually do that to maintain all of your certifications. So it's not, it doesn't just stop when you get the certification. You still are paying for not all of them, but some of them, you're still paying uh, yearly to keep that cert, and you're also paying for CPEs and stuff. Um, but CISP there, Sec, uh, Sec Plus. Now, I had actually taken Sec Plus back in the day when it was free for life, or uh, not free for life, uh, certification for life. So if you had this, it you never, it never uh, went away. I, I guess you could say, and never they never asked you to re up it. Uh, they changed that to where it was every three years you had to renew it. Uh, let's see. I don't even know what this CIPP is here. There's the ethical hacker. That I, now here's the caveat with this one here. If you try to do self study, they charge you a hundred dollar more to take the test. That's a guaranteed fact. I know because I again I taught CEH for twelve years, so I know what they do. Uh, this they basically want you to go to a approved training center ATC, like a New Horizons I worked at before, a training camp, whatever. And they want you to go take the week-long boot camp style, then take the test. If you do that, you take the test for 500 If you don't do that and you do self-study and just go to a testing center, Prometric or Pearson View, then they'll charge you an extra 100 And they state that in there. Now, I'm assuming they still do that. But when I did it for 12 years, <laughs> that's what they did every year. Ridiculous. MTA, what is a server? Microsoft Network and Fundamentals. Okay, strange. All right, anyways. We move on past all this. So it looks like they all basically kind of go for the same thing. Um, so in my opinion, I would say offensive security, number one, in my opinion. If you want a job or if you want a good resume or if you want a good uh, chance at an interview, CEH, SEC Plus, this will usually get you in the door. What you do from there is up to you. Uh, but you can see they got a ton of different courses that they, they do here. This one in particular is the ethical hacking, but they have a variety of other different certifications as well. So if you look here, you'll see there's the licensed pen tester one and all that. Now, if you decide to go the self-study route, which a lot of times you can do pretty successfully, I recommend, because uh, I've, I've browsed through a variety of different video sites that do a, uh, a variety of different courses and stuff, and I've actually taken a few of the courses just to kind of see what it is. And a lot of times, it may be good material, but the presentation is not very good. Uh, you may not understand the person. Um, they may not have very good audio or video quality. And uh, so when I'm looking at different courses that I would recommend to somebody for just learning self-serve, uh, self self-learning, this one, in my opinion, is one of the best. Uh, this is a gentleman named Vivek. I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, but he ran. He runs this Pentester Academy. I originally had watched him first from a site he had called Security Tube, and I think he still runs that. It's called Security Tube, and it's kind of like uh, parsing out all the garbage that you would si see on YouTube. Like if you search YouTube for hacking, you would get every script kitty video, every nine-year-old on a microphone telling you how to hack someone's Facebook when they basically just left it open or some stupid nonsense. It g it gets rid of all that garbage and actually gets real content, <laughs> like real. Uh, relative, you know, uh, security content, and it curates it into this thing called Security Tube, which is pretty cool. So he he busted off and he he made his own uh, company here called Pentester Academy, and he's got a variety of different courses. And if you click here on the courses, uh, he had things like Python for pen testing, uh, attacking and defending active. Uh, I'm sorry, attacking and defending Active Directory, assembly language, shell coded for Windows and Linux and JavaScript. You can see there's tw quite a few of them. This one here was the one of the first I took with his. It's called Pen Testing with Metasploit, uh, and then the Wi-Fi security. He's fantastic at the Wi-Fi stuff. Crazy good. Uh, but you can see, th look at these topics. I mean, this <laughs> this will train you to be the ultimate samurai 
in your uh, pen testing endeavors here. Uh, but if you go down through, in my opinion, I've taken a number of these. He is by far the best teacher explaining these things that I've ever seen. Um, he explains them very well. Uh, great demonstrations, uh, great video quality for the demonstrations. Um, I can't recommend this guy enough. And the pricing is very, very good. It's nothing really outrageous or anything like that. And I think on some of these, if I'm not mistaken, that you can actually get a, what is that, pandas for pen testers? You can actually get a certification, like a certificate, saying you completed the course. So you can add that to your resume. Um, it's not an actual, obvious, you know, accredited certification like, you know, Security Plus or anything. But definitely the way to go. In my opinion, this this would be the site I would recommend for anybody looking to do self-learning, kind of self-paced learning. All of these courses are top-notch, all of them. Um, highly recommended. Now, as far as YouTube, obviously my channel hopefully will be a main resource for you. <laughs> That's my goal, I hope. And uh, but there is there is some there is a couple that I really do dig on this uh, as far as like teaching stuff. And one of them in particular is um, I'm trying to remember now the name. I think it's uh, let's see Hackers Exploit. I think yeah yeah Hackers Exploit. Uh, this gentleman here I really like. I really like his material. He's got a lot of great stuff. Um, and the way he presents it is is very good as well. Uh, he explains everything, and he, his voice and his audio and the video is really good. Um, I like the way he explains things, and he has really relevant topics that you can find. Like if you go to the videos or if you go to the playlist, he has um, really relative relevant videos as far as like really good, interesting topics. He does a lot of different walkthroughs as well. And this cyber talk thing, I'm gonna actually try to hit him up and see if he wants to do a little collab, and uh, do a little uh, two two man talking there about some cyber stuff. See if I can pop on there. And he does a little uh, review of the CEH, which is good. I, I watched a little bit of that, which is pretty cool. Uh, but I li I really like this guy's stuff, and the playlist is great. I mean, he's got very and he's doing kind of stuff that I'm gonna try to do on mine. So even though he may be competition, I don't mind plugging the guy I mean, he's great he's great 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 stuff but you can see here he's got like uh, I think there's like a Linux essentials right here uh, Linux general there's some uh, bug bounty stuff so really great stuff and really great content on his site so uh, obviously please subscribe to my channel I have a lot of great content coming but I don't mind plugging this cat here I really dig this guy's stuff so when it comes to YouTube out of all of them out there I would say this guy there's, there's only one complaint I have and uh, if if he watches this, <laughs> just take it with a grain of salt. And this goes for all of the cyber videos out there I've seen and hacking videos and stuff. Please, I pray, I pray to you, <laughs> please start making content with mobile in mind. For me, I don't go anywhere without my tablet. I am a tablet freak. I have, you know, my... Uh, my Android tablets are my main ones. <laughs> my iOS stuff, my iPad is only for music because, well, it is what it is. But mm, I bring them everywhere. And uh, and if I'm on the treadmill, I want to pop in and watch a little hacker exploit or something. I want to see the commands. So if you're doing a command and a terminal, please just zoom in. If you're doing something and showing something on a on a page like something like this, please zoom in. Be mindful of the mobile and the tablet users that are going to watch this content because a lot of people are watching it on this now. And I'm going to make a massive effort <laughs> on my channel to make sure everything is in large view because I want to think about tablet er, 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 and phone users. So anybody that's making videos that may be watching this at all, I just ask humbly, please, try to zoom in on commands you're typing or, or just zoom in in general so I can kind of see from a tablet view, while I'm on the treadmill rocking it out, I want to be able to see, okay, what is, what is this guy, you know, he's saying this, but I want to see what he's doing. It's really difficult. Uh, that's what I'll have. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but anyways, <laughs> I went a little long on some of this, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys get an idea of kind of where my mindset is on this. And again, I'm doing this from a perspective of having taught for a variety of boot camp style uh, companies 
or I would go out to military bases, I would go out to hotels or whatever, and people would come to me and I would teach them. I have a really good handle on how these people do the certification stuff. Um, and, and a lot of them are just basically, I'm, t- I'm talking about the companies that put on certifications like Microsoft or CompTIA or whoever. A lot of them are just in it for the retest money, right? And, and a lot of them aren't as relevant to your everyday job. So in security field especially, uh, continuing your learning on your own, self-learning stuff, is is uh, mandatory. Now, get the certification so that you have uh, some beef to your resume and you can go ahead and try to get a, an interview fairly quickly. Um, but really know your stuff. Really practice it. Now, uh, on my channel that I'm going to be doing some videos, a uh, section called Pop, 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 Another Server Drop, I'm going to be going over war games uh, like from Volnhub or whatever, and I'm going to demonstrate concepts while busted into the box um, so those along with my essentials videos uh, hopefully will give you a pretty good base to start learning some of the more relative things that you would find in a real world pen test type of position because like I said I've done the training side I've also manually done pen testing for you know the government and for a company I'm working at now so I have some experience in both so I kind of give you the overview of what you would likely see in this day and age here when it comes to the pen test side. So I'm hoping that my videos will be able to help you guys out with any of that kind of stuff uh, when it comes to that. Now, mo- the majority of the videos I'm going to be doing and content on the YouTube stuff is off is going to be 100% free, and I'm being upfront about that. Now, there is probably later in the future some content I'll probably make course-wise, maybe uh, uh, books or maybe some uh, video series that goes a little bit more in detail about some things, and I may monetize some of those as well. But for the majority of it, it's the time, I just kind of will push just donations, right? So down in the, in the link here in my description, I'll give you a link to a donation so I can get a better mic. This mic sucks, but <laughs> it's all good, man. But some, get some better gear and, and all that kind of stuff. So basically to monetize the channel and to make it possible, I'll probably just mo- mainly push the donate side because I noticed that a lot of um, this community is okay with that sort of thing. And... Uh, so I, I I may monetize a few things later on. I'll definitely have my merch where I'll have some cool shirts you can get and all that kind of stuff and uh, hats or whatever. And I'll be wearing them on my channel. But for the most part, the, the, the majority of the content here that you'll find on my site, you'll find an, uh, entire documents on my com site, which will go over different attacks and different you know concepts, things like that. So make sure you check out com and all my different links down below uh, for all the different things from Chicagodai wise. And you can also email me if you have questions related to certification because, again, I've, I've done that as a professional job for quite a while. So I can answer the majority of your questions when it comes to that sort of thing as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed my opinion on this. And, again, this is just my opinion. I don't mean to offend anybody or, uh, or, or, or put anybody down with any of this kind of stuff. These are just what I've noticed being both a trainer and also pen tester in, in the real world. So hopefully that gave you guys a little bit more information about what you can do and what you should do for certifications. So until the next time, have a good time. Happy hacking.